Today we're back at Jordan Hill. This is episode four of the Kokanee Tour of Utah. The weather has warmed up quite a bit here in Utah and the ice on the lakes is melting fast. So this most likely will be our last episode of Jordan Hill for a while. I'm fishing with my good friend, John. He is the owner of Soldier Soul Lures. He has been a big supporter of me and I have fished a lot of his lures over the last several years. He is the original creator of the micro shrimp that have become very popular. I have caught more kokanee on his lures than any other gear out there. Right now, he's taking a break from making tackle. We are looking forward to catching up and hooking into some fish today. Thanks for joining us on our trip. Oh, grab it, John. Oh no, he's hooked. He's got him in his mouth. They just he must have just spun weird in a while. Okay, what's it gonna be? Broke to lead. Rainbow. Keep that guy or send him home. Okay. Find his big brother. Let him grow up a little. Exactly. Okay. Well, there's nothing. No, a single lure's been there. One, they've all, right. I think they've all hit now. Yep.
rainbow, is it? <laughs> nice one, though. It is a nice one. At this point, the wind really had started to pick up and killed the quality of our audio. If we had a coke on today, my bets would be that it was this fish. If you watch what happens, it hits and goes all the way to the top and jumps out of the water before it even unhooking from the downrigger. This is a classic kokanee move. But I've also known to look at the fish at Jordan L through kokanee glasses, so, so who knows what it was for sure. At this point in the trip, the wind had really picked up. We got this fish on. As you can see, the boat's rocking. The fish swam over and ended up getting tangled into my downrigger cable. As I tried to set my net down on my motor to free the line from the cable, I accidentally put it in between the motors instead of on top like I had thought. My net slipped into the water to a slow death. Rest in peace, Ned. You served me well. Having a good net is pretty crucial to landing these fish, especially when they're the size of that we had been catching today. So what do you do when you lose a net like this? Luckily, Corey with Kokanee Kid Outdoors came to the rescue. He was out on Jordanelle that same day doing a guided trip. I phoned him up to see if he happened to have a spare net and he informed me that he had not only one, but two spare nets. He's been in the same situation that we were in and he wanted to make sure that he never loses a net without having a spare. That doesn't surprise me knowing Corey, he always has backups of everything. If you need someone to do a guided trip with, I highly recommend him. He's very professional and has top notch gear.
This last fish ended up being the biggest fish of the day. We didn't end up boating any kokanee today on Jordanelle, but sure had a great time. It was great to catch up with John and swap stories. I really appreciate all his support over the years. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out all of our other episodes of the Kokanee Tour of Utah. We've got some great lakes coming up this season. Happy fishing and tight lines.